Malaysia's national COVID-19 immunization program will kick off tomorrow. First in line to receive the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines are Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin and Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah alongside frontliners. The question now centers around how to implement the program in an effective, sustained and equitable manner. Health Policies Specialist Dr. Kuo Sui Keng underscores three main hurdles to keep an eye out for. In the micro sense, there are several hurdles in front of us. Firstly is to ensure that those vaccines are safely transported up to the 605 vaccination centres distributed across Malaysia. Secondly, to ensure that this, uh, the people who are providing those vaccines that we call vaccinators are appropriately trained and they will be able to administer the vaccine safely, effectively and without any wastage. Thirdly, is to ensure that uh, there is enough vaccine confidence in the population that they will sign up to receive the vaccine when it's their time to receive the vaccine. But there are other longer term considerations as well, notably to ensure that Malaysia has an adequate supply of vaccines in the coming few weeks and months. Finally, in terms of the implementation, is to ensure that there is an equitable distribution. What I mean to say is, we want as many people as possible who are at high risk to receive the vaccine as early as possible. There will be a period of time where everybody lobbies to become a frontliner. Everybody believes that they should be front of the queue. Then the government will have to make a very difficult decision. Should teachers be prioritized over media workers or should media workers be prioritized over senior citizens or should senior citizens be prioritized over supermarket workers? And these are all important stakeholders and important population groups to make these decisions about which group goes first. We need a framework and that framework needs to be built by the government so that we can appropriately prioritize uh, the population groups who should receive the vaccines first. These are the micro elements of the implementation. Kaur also points out the need to have a clear big picture strategy for the vaccination program. At the moment, it is still not immediately clear what are the strategic outcomes of the vaccination program. We know that we need to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible, but how does the vaccination program tie in with the entire public health response? The pandemic response cannot just rely on the vaccination program because testing, tracing, isolation strategies and healthcare are equally important components of the pandemic response. And the second component to consider whenever we're looking at the vaccination program is to look at what are key performance indicators or KPIs or you can call them metrics to measure success. How do we know that the vaccination program has been successful? And there could be some criteria, for example, the number of people who've been vaccinated, a documented drop in the number of cases and infections, fewer admissions to hospitals, and so on. So these are metrics of success that at some point we need to clarify for ourselves so that we can measure the success of the vaccination program. Touching on the issue of vaccine confidence, Dr. Kaur says while about 60 to 70 percent of Malaysians are ready to accept the vaccines, continuous efforts and communication must be carried out throughout the entire immunization program. There are no magic solutions to vaccine confidence. We must consider that uh, people in Malaysia will generally be divided into three groups. 60 to 70 percent of Malaysians would accept the vaccine and they understand its benefits. Another 20 to 30 percent or so might, might have reasonable questions uh, that they want to answer from the government of Malaysia or the Ministry of Health. And a small percentage of 5, maybe 10 percent would be what we call anti-vaxxers. For the first group is to continue to reassure them and to provide information to them so that they can make good and informed decisions. For the second group is to reach out to them with appropriate education mechanisms so that they will be receiving the information that they need at a time when it's suitable and convenient for them in a language that they're familiar with through a format and a medium that uh, they prefer and using personalities that they trust. And for vaccine confidence as well, we may need to consider legal remedies for some of the anti-vaxxers out there, especially those who are spreading false information. But not just education, public examples, for example, the Prime Minister of Malaysia is getting vaccinated. This is bringing Malaysia in line with the practices of other countries where their leaders have also been vaccinated. When uh, Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin receives a vaccine tomorrow, that will be certainly a shot in the arm for vaccine confidence in Malaysia.